Hey, so today's another episode and talking about taking a manual mill, turning it into a hydraulic mill. So today's super important because we're talking about the pumps that run your hydraulics. So like I said before, I'm working on a Timber King 1220, but this should work for a lot of different mills. You can adapt it. The goal is just to provide you with enough information so that you can do this for yourself. All right, so to talk about hydraulic pumps, I brought you over to the trailer yard. And I'm going to show you a few different types of hydraulic pumps. One is on a dump trailer right here next to me, and the other is on the sawmill. All right, so your two main options when you're thinking about running hydraulics are run them off of a gas or fossil fuel diesel powered engine, which might be on your mill head, or it might be a separate pump. And your second option would be to run it off an electric motor. Okay, so wood misers are really popular for running off of an electric motor. Uh, they run off of a motor down next to the trailer hitch area. It's got a contact strip. I think I'm saying that right, but it has a contact strip. So when the motors, when the mill head is back, it provides electricity from the alternator and the battery that's on the mill head down to the hydraulic pump, which is located in a cabinet down on the frame. Uh, Timber Kings are typically run from the hydraulics and they're run through an energy chain off the head and the hoses are actually run down to the frame that will then provide hydraulic power through a set of valves, a manual set of valves. Um, but all the hydraulic power is coming from the mill head. So when I chose how to set up the hydraulics for my mill, uh, the goal was I did not want a bunch of hoses running back and forth with the mill head, whether that's just a main supply and return or whether that was everything. I didn't want the pump running off of the 22, 23 horsepower engine, whatever it is. But I really didn't want to stress the motor that much, have to come up with a new belt configuration, not a hydraulic pump up there, and then have to figure out how to keep the hoses in an organized fashion, whether that was an overhead cable like I've seen some, or whether that was the energy chain like Timber King and Cooks and a lot of those sawmills have. So instead I chose to do it electric and the electric runs off of batteries that are down on the frame. So I'll show you that in just a minute. But at first I wanted to show you the hydraulic pump that's on my dump trailer. And that's a little bit easier to see and describe when we're talking about double acting versus single acting pumps and how you need to set yours up and why you need to set it up that way. Okay, so this is the dump trailer pump. Some of you might have seen a dump trailer pump before and might have that. They're more common than sawmills, but also the pump on this is easier to see than the pump on the mills. So I figured I'd show this one to you, and I'll show you the one on the mill too, but I just kind of wanted to explain two main differences when you're looking at electric pumps. So this is a double acting pump. So basically, this is an electric pump, right, that has one of these remotes that you've probably seen for up and down. And it is double acting, which means when you press the up button, it's going to be powered up, obviously. When you press the down button, it's gonna be powered down. Okay, so the main difference between that and a single acting pump would be on a dump trailer, it would be power up, and then it would be gravity down. So you would hear it go up, and you would press the down button, and you would just see it go down. You'd hear it a little bit, but you wouldn't hear the pump working. That's because the pump's not really on. All it's doing is letting fluid flow back into the reservoir, which is this guy right here. So the way it works is with the remote, when you press the button, on top of this, you can see these solenoids. So these are your makeshift valves. Not makeshift, they're actually valves. So it, it powers this solenoid. Once you press the button, it turns on the main solenoid, which activates the pump. That solenoid will open up these, depending on which way you press the button, will power these solenoid valves, which will either let, power, let fluid flow out this way, or let fluid flow out this way. Obviously, if fluid's going out this way, then fluid's gonna be coming back in from this side. There's just another look at the top of the, the pump. But this is your motor. So all this is is running the actual pump itself. This is your pump and this is your reservoir. The reason you don't necessarily want a double acting pump 
for a system like this is you always want the fluid to come the same direction. With a double acting cylinder, depending on which way you press the button, depends on which solenoid is powered, and then your fluid would either come from the left side or the right side. Well with this you always want the fluid coming from the exact same side. It's coming in to your valve, it's going through your valve, and it's coming out on the return side. So if you're buying new, there's a lot of good hydraulic pumps out there that run off of 12 volt electricity. Uh, one of them I know is KTI Hydraulics, it's on Amazon. I actually bought one of their pumps in order to install it and ended up not because I found something different. That being said, they seem like really good products they are made in America. I would highly recommend making sure that you're finding something that's made in America and something that has good product support when you're thinking about hydraulics because things are always going to leak. You're probably not going to set it up right the first time and you want good schematics when you're working on it. So that way when things go wrong in the future, you can go back and figure out what's going on. So kind of like I said that I didn't use the KTI pump is because I found these. So one of these is closed and the other's open obviously. But this is a Monarch pump. These were super popular. They're made in Michigan or were made in Michigan. I'm pretty sure they're not made anymore. They have really good support. You can still buy their products through different suppliers online. There's plenty of PDFs that talk about them and they're really common among industrial equipment like hydraulic sky lifts, uh, wood miser sawmills. You can find them in a lot of different applications. These were used for army targets. So what they would do is these were these are double acting pumps and they would bring the targets up and put the targets back down. But like I said before, I didn't want it for its double acting purposes. So I turned it into a single acting pump. You can always make a double acting pump single acting, but you can't go the other way around. So what you see right here is the wires that would go to that control box that you saw on the other pump. That being said, I only want one of them activated and on this pump it's this wire just needs to be grounded and then this red wire, this dark red wire, just needs to be hot. So I mentioned before that these were set up in parallel. They're not. They're set up in series. That was my mistake. So right now they're providing 12 volts to both of these pumps. So it comes out of this side of the battery, it goes in to this pump on this end, and then it pigtails over and this one mirrors, it looks the exact same. And the reason I did that was I just wanted to run two pumps in series, so or in parallel, sorry, two pumps in parallel so that I doubled my GPM, my flow, my gallons per minute, but I didn't need to increase the pressure. So, this is actually a 4.2 gallon per minute pump. This one is also 4.2 gallons per minute. So, in an ideal world, they're providing 8.4 gallons per minute. The thing that you have to think about is how much you're actually going to lose. So, this is 132 inches of hose going to the log loader. And then obviously you have all these fittings that are going into your different valves. You have your valves. You lose flow due to friction and you, and you lose pressure due to friction. So I say all that about friction because you got to think about that when you're looking for pumps. So a lot of your pumps that you'll find on Amazon, eBay, some of those other things are made for a high pressure. They're made for 3000 PSI, something like that. Nothing wrong with that. You're going to be up above 2000 most likely. But a lot of them are about 1.5 gallons per minute. And I'm telling you, you're going to be super disappointed with that. To put it in perspective, if you watch the videos on the LT40, those are running virtually the same pumps on these and they're getting probably about five gallons per minute, four to five gallons per minute, if I had to guess, based off of everything that I can tell from these pumps and from my research. So you can watch those videos, you can see how fast that works. You can watch my log loader and understand that in a previous video when you saw it going up and down, that was going up and down with about 8.4 gallons per minute at the pump. 
an electric motor running a hydraulic pump is close to 100% efficient. That's because it's high torque, it only needs to run for a very short period of time. A gasoline engine running a hydraulic pump is closer to 50% efficient. Don't take my word for it, you can look it up. So when you're looking at the hydraulic pump that you might hook up to your gas engine, a lot of them are starting at around 11 gallons per minute. Some of them are 16 gallons per minute. They come with a recommended horsepower that you should run those pumps at. And consider that you're probably only going to be getting about 50% of the flow that you think you're going to be getting out of that if you run it at that minimum horsepower. So that 11 gallons per minute pump probably only actually going to provide you about 5.5 when it's under load. Electrics going to pretty much provide that all the way through. So I have the lid off this guy and the lid off the batteries to show you what the system looks like in terms of how level it is. So if I was running this on a stationary mill, I would not have mounted the hydraulics to the mill base. And the only reason for that is I lose this bunk of capacity. But in reality, I can still fit a 16 foot log on here. I just can't cut 17 and a half feet or 18 feet, whatever it was. I think that's a small price to pay for all the capabilities that I'm gonna gain. But if it was a stationary mill, you could easily have this stuff set to the side. You could build this almost like a hydraulic power pack. You could put quick connects on your pumps, you could have, or on your valves. You could have your valves set to another side. You can move them around. You have a lot of different options. Since I'm running two pumps, I wanted to be running two batteries. Um, off camera, it's running on a solar charger. So that's the only thing that charges these batteries. The alternator doesn't charge them. They're deep cycle batteries. The alternator wouldn't really help that much. So it just sits on a trickle charge for days on end while I don't use it. And then I have two deep cycle batteries. It should last for a long time. I'll keep you updated on that though. So I said in the other video that I was going to clean this up before I did the video on the pumps. I didn't. I still have my trailer wiring here. I still have all this stuff set out. But I wanted you guys to see more or less what it's going to look like when you're setting it up. So I mentioned this before, but this is the thing that turns the pumps on and off. So some mills have a contact switch that runs on the, sol on the valve. So when you flip a valve lever, it would move a button left or right and that would turn the pump on or off. I couldn't find valves that did that to be honest and I'm not sure I wanted them so I, I wanted it to just run off a button. So this button is just a momentary 50 amp ignition switch and it's run to a solenoid that came off the pumps. So I pulled this pump out of the box and I moved it onto the, the, the valve mount whatever you want to call it so it's it's got a good ground and it comes power in on this side and power out to the pumps right there so all you do is press the button it fires the pump up and then you can move your valves whatever way you want so in recap my system is two monarch pumps mine is a model 642 you can find different models all over eBay. You can find them new still through a manufacturer. I'll include a link down below on a PDF that they have that lists all of their different pumps. Other options are KTI, things like that. But my system, two Monarch pumps that are 4.2 gallons per minute each. So an 8.4 gallon per minute system. Two deep cycle marine batteries one seven spool manual valve from Summit Hydraulics, and then the solenoid that came with the pumps. You can use, usually you can use regular 12 volt solenoids as long as they're rated for the amperage that would be coming off your battery. So to tie it all together, my recommendation is to go with electric pumps. There's a couple different reasons. One is maintenance. I don't wanna maintain two different motors on my mill. I also don't want to run hoses all the way down an energy chain or through an overhead cable system and deal with a hydraulic pump up at the mill head. 
I just didn't want to do that. So that's the first is ease of use and maintenance. Number two is flow. So a really good hydraulic pump or two, even better, two good hydraulic pumps that are run in parallel will honestly provide better flow than you would probably get off of using it off your mill head. It would also provide better flow than using a very small gas motor down with a regular hydraulic pump. Another reason I went with that is efficiency. So not only is it a more efficient system of a setup to me, but it also is a more efficient motor. An electric motor is more efficient than a gas motor when it comes to providing power for a hydraulic pump for a very short period of time. And when you think about all the features of log loading, they're all very short term things, maybe 10 seconds. That is not a problem for an electric pump. Another and probably the main reason is it's just a lot easier. It is a lot easier to press a button and move a valve than it is to turn on a motor, pull start it, get it up to throttle, use it for the three seconds you want to use it, and then shut it all back off. It's just not something I want to deal with. It's also really nice because it is so much quieter than having another engine right down here mounted to it. So I hope that was useful. Like I said, just a brief intro on what I know about hydraulic pumps for these kind of systems and the way I set mine up so far. I'm sure as time goes on, I'll come up with better suggestions. Uh, and all the other videos on hydraulics will be based around these pumps running all the hydraulic systems. So you'll see them a lot more but I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on the hydraulic systems and how mine is set up. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions or reach out to me, I'm more than happy to answer it. It's not perfect, but so far everything's working really well.